Good evening, GCC Math 1-5 College Algebra class. Moving on to 6.2, 1-to-1 uh, one -one functions and inverse functions. Now, I, I realize I used this term in a previous lesson without really talking a lot about it, so we'll, we'll be a lot more careful to well-define these things here. So, the idea of a 1-to-1 -one -one function. Let's go back to talking about exactly what a function is. Do you remember when we had this idea where I had some sort of blob here and this represented my domain? And let's say here I've got uh, the numbers uh, 0, 1, 2, and 3. And then over here represented my range. And let's say I've got the numbers um, uh, 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 0, 1, 4, and 9. And then I've got some sort of mapping, a relationship. 0 goes to 0, 1 goes to 1, 2 goes to 4, and 3 goes to 9. There, there's my relationship. There's my mapping. Now, is this a function? Yes. Why? Well, because for any one input, there's only one output. So for the 3, it only goes to 9. Now, what if the 3 had gone to 4? Would it still be a function? And the answer is yes. As long as any one of these doesn't go to more than one out there, remember the one in class we did was we talked about people and phone numbers? Is it possible for a person to have two different phone numbers? Yes, and that's not a functional relationship. And then we talked about people and their height. Is it possible for a person to have two different heights at the same time? No, that's a function. But is it possible for two people to have the same height? Yes, but that doesn't make it not a function. That's still a function. So this is a function. Now I'm going to put this aside for a moment, and I'm going to look at another function. And in this one, I'm going to have domain and range. And here I'm going to have... Um, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. And over here I'm going to have 0, 1, and 2. And negative 2 goes to positive 2. Negative 1 goes to positive 1. 0 goes to 0, 1 goes to 1, 2 goes to 2. Is that a function? Well, for any domain, is there two different ranges? No. Then this is a function. Um, definitely is a function. Now what I want to do is I want to talk about the inverse. I want to switch. So the inverse is where we switch x and y's. More specifically, we switch the domain and the range. The domain becomes the range the range becomes the domain. All right, so keep that in mind, and let's go back and look at our first example. And if I switch the domain and range here, so now this becomes my domain, all the function relationships are going the other way. Zero becomes zero, one becomes one, four becomes two, nine becomes three. And I ask the question, is this the inverse of this function? This is definitely a function. Is its inverse a function as well? Yes. Because the range, which is now the domain, only goes to 1. And how about this one? Is the inverse of this function a function? It's definitely a function, right? The, 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 I mean, the, the regular relationship here, 0 to 0, negative 1, to, every one of the domains only goes one place over here. But if I switch it, if I do the inverse, 0 goes to 0, 1 can go to negative 1 or positive 1. The inverse, if you switch domain and range, is no longer a function. This itself is a function, but if I switch it, it's not a function anymore. So sometimes uh, a, 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 a function will have an inverse that is also a function, and sometimes a function will have an inverse that is not a function. And here we have our first big term, one to one. A one-to-one -one function. One-to-one -one is a special term here. A one-to-one -one function is a special function where 
the inverse is also a function. So we just saw two examples of that, one where the inverse was not a function and one where it is a function. All right, so now let's take a closer look. One-to-one -one is a special type of relationship, and if a function is one-to-one, -one, then all these other things and characteristics have to be true. So it's very important to recognize a one-to-one -one function. So let's, let's take a look at it. And let's say I'm going to do uh, uh, my domain here is going to be the age of several people in the classroom, uh, 23, 31, 36, and 34-year-old. And the range, so the domain is going to represent the age, and the range is going to represent um, their, uh, 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 their, let's see, do we know what A1C are? The, 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 the glucose level? No. Uh, I, I'm trying to make it a nice number here. Uh, we could, let's, let's make it uh, their, uh, uh, something we all understand and know, um, some, their weight. So let's say I've got um, uh, uh, 100 and 20 pounds, 130 pounds, and um, 140 pounds. And here's the relationship. The 23-year-old weighs 130. The 31-year-old weighs 120. The 36-year-old also weighs 120. And the 34-year-old weighs 140. Now, is this a function? No. Why not? Because, uh, or is it a function? Yes, 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 yes. Is it a function? Yes. Because any input only has one output. So yes, this is a function. What's not a function is the inverse, if I flip it. If I take the inverse, so now the weight is the domain and the age is the range. I've got a 40 pound person, 140 pound person that's 34, 130 pound person that's 23, 120 pound person that's 31 and 36. Two different outputs. So this is a function, but it, the inverse is not a function so this is not one to one. It is a function. A person's age, in this class, the person's age and their weight. Now I could, what if I had another 31 year old that weighed something else? Oh gosh, then all of a sudden then the original one's not even a function anymore. But just from this data, it is a function. All right, let's take a look at this same problem again, but instead of doing a mapping, I want to look at a, uh, an, uh, a set. So here comes the set brackets and I'm going to give us a whole bunch of different numbers here. Let's see, negative 2 comma 6 is one relationship, one ordered pair. Negative 1, 3 is another ordered pair. 0, 2, um, 1, 5, and 2, 8. Now, I haven't said that this is a function or not, so let's explore is this a function? And then, is its inverse a function? And if it is a function and its inverse is a function, then it's that special function called a one-to-one. -one. All right, is it a function? Well, let's see. I've got an input of negative two, I get out six. Anywhere else, do I have an input of negative two and get something other than six? No. Input of negative one and I get out a three. Anywhere else, do I have an input of negative one and get something other than a three? No. Input of zero, get out a two. Anywhere else do I have an input of 0 and get something other than 2? No. Input of 1, get out 5. Input of 2, get out 8. All the x's are actually different. So right there, that tells me that this is a function. What about its inverse? So now the inverse, I kind of have to switch it and think about it backwards in my mind. So the domain becomes the range. The range becomes the domain. x values become the y values. y values become the x values. Input of 6, output of negative 2. Anywhere else an input of 6 and get something other? No. Input of 3, output of negative 1. Anywhere else an input of 3? No. Input of 2, get out of 0. Any other inputs of 2? No. Input of 5, get out of 1. Input of 8, all of the y values are the change. The inverse is also a function. This is a function. Its inverse is a function. This is a 1, 2, 1 function. So this um, represents a one-to-one -one function here. We also need to be able to test other 
representations of functions. For example, a graph. Suppose I have a graph of the following function. Now, how do I know uh, uh, that this is indeed a function? Well, what was the test for a graph? The test for a graph was vertical line test. I draw a whole bunch of vertical lines. And if I hit the function more than once, if I hit it more than once, it's not a function. Like if it curved around like this and I hit it twice, then that's not a function. That's no good. But this one definitely is a function. It passes a vertical line test. <coughs> Excuse me. Passes vertical line test. So it is a function, sure enough. Well, what would be the test for one-to-one? -one? The one-to-one -one test is a horizontal line test. And we only do this if this is a function. If this was not a function, then we wouldn't even do horizontal line test. If this was not, the original thing wasn't a function, then it cannot be a one-to-one -one function, so we would never even do this. Horizontal line test. Just like the vertical line test, now I draw horizontal lines, and do I hit it more than once? And of course, if I do it right here, I hit it one, two, three different times. If I drew my horizontal line test here, one, two, three times. So the inverse is not a function. It fails the horizontal line test. All right, um, let's do a couple more that I want to test. So I'm going to give you four graphs. And we're going to test each of these to see if they are, um, all of them will be uh, functions. They will all pass vertical line test. But are they one-to-one -one functions? So all of these are functions. They all pass vertical line tests. All of them are functions. But which ones are one to one? Which ones would also pass the horizontal line test? If you want to take a moment and pause the video and try it, and then I will go over the answers with you. All right. So let's see. Horizontal line test. Yes. This is a one to one function. Horizontal line test, no. It's not one to one. It is a function. It passes vertical line test. It is a function. It's just not one to one. How about this one? Yes, this is a one to one function. How about a line? Yes, this is one to one function. And um, can you think of any line that would not be a one-to-one -one function? Draw any old line there. And if you think about it for a moment, if we were in class, we'd, we'd draw it up there and talk about it a little bit. There is one line. What about if it was just a horizontal line? Then the whole line would be everywhere, and it would not be a one-to-one -one function. So a horizontal line is not a one-to-one -one function. All the other lines would be. So finding domain and range of inverses is just switching the domain and the range. So, um, so given a function, it has domain and range. The inverse of the function, the uh, for the inverse of the function, the domain is the range of the original function, and the range is the domain of the original function. They switch. So domain and range of the function become the range and the domain of the inverse. Everything switched. So instead of going from somebody's age to how much they weigh, they're going from how much you weigh to their age. 
So the inverse really is literally just switching them. We do have a special notation for the inverse function. We know you have uh, f of x for original function here, f of x. An inverse function, f to the negative 1 of x. Um, also, uh, please be careful, this is not 1 over f of x. It's not negative exponent rule. This isn't a negative exponent where it's 1 over f of x. This is the inverse of a function where domain and range are switched. So quite literally, if we're trying to find the inverse, we just switch the x's and the y's. So let's take a look at a table. And here I'm going to have x's and y's. Think about them as uh, domain and range, input and outputs, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2, 4, 1, 0, 1, and 4. So this is my function. Find the domain and range of this function. The domain is going to be negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2. The range is going to be um, Let's see, I've only got zeros, one, and four. I'm going to put them in order from least to the greatest. I've got one twice and four twice, but I don't need to put them in there twice. So this was my original function, f of x. What would the, dom what would the inverse be? Well, I'm going, to have to, I'm going to have to get another piece of paper. That's what I'm going to have to do. I kind of fell off my paper here. So let's see. Uh, x's and y's. I'm going to switch them. Negative 2, 4. Negative 2, 4 becomes 4, negative 2. Negative 1, 1 becomes 1, negative 1. 0, 0 would still be the same. 1, 1 would still be the same. 2, 4 becomes 4, 2. So now let's find the domain and range of the inverse The domain is 0, 1, and 4. And the range is negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. And do you see how they just completely switched? The domain and range of my original function become the range and the domain of the inverse. We're just switching them. That's how it works. Well. What if we want to find um, the uh, inverse of a function? So we found the inverse um, of a function uh, algebraically. Wait, before we do that, uh, no, no, find, find the inverse. Find the inverse of f of x, given that f of x equals 2x minus 1. And I want to find the inverse. All right. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to, this is in function notation. I'm going to rewrite it as an equation, a relationship between x's and y's. Because I know that the inverse is I just have to switch the x's and the y's. I have to switch the domains and range. So I'm going to quite literally do that right here. And I get x equals 2y minus 1. Now I'm going to solve for y. All right, so let's see. Add 1 to both sides. Divide everything by 2. And I get 1 half of x plus 1 half equals y, right? Divide by 2, divide by 2. There's my inverse. Here is my original function. And here is its inverse. Switch the x's and y's and solve. Now, it will get harder than that. It, it'll definitely get um, a, a little bit more awkward. It'll get harder than that. Let's take a look at an example uh, where the algebra is a little bit more difficult. 
find the inverse of f of x given that f of x equals um, 1 over x minus 3. All right, the process is the same. The step-by-step -step is the same. First, write this as an equation. y equals 1 over x minus 3. Next, switch the x's and y's. x equals 1 over y minus 3. Now I have to solve for y. This is where it gets a little bit more hard, uh, a little bit more difficult. Um, think about this x as x over 1, cross multiply, 1 times 1 is 1, x times y minus 3, cross multiplying, distribute the x, 1 equals xy minus 3x, add the 3x's to one, both sides, I want to get rid of that x, divide everything by x, and I get y equals I'm going to rewrite this as 3x plus 1 over x. There's my inverse. So the inverse is 3x plus 1 over x. There was my original function. There's the inverse. Solving for the x's. And it will get a little bit harder than this. Let's take a look at another example. Find the inverse of g of x given that g of x equals um, the square root of x plus 1. All right, same trick, same process. Write it as an equation. y equals the square root of x plus 1. Switch the x's and y's. x equals the square root of y plus 1. Want to get y alone by itself? Square both sides. And I get x squared equals y plus 1. Subtract 1 x squared minus 1 equals y. There's my inverse. There was my function. There's my inverse. Let's look at another one. Another tough one. Suppose I've got um, h of x is um, 2x over x plus 1 and I want to find the inverse of h of x. Oh, this is where it starts to get really tough now. Well, the process is still the same. First step, I'm going to write it as an equation. y equals 2x over x plus 1. Second, I'm going to switch the x's and y's. That becomes an x. All of the x's become y's. Now I want to solve for y. And you can imagine I've got y more than one y there. This is going to be a little bit more difficult. If I cross multiply 1 times 2y equals x times y plus 1, this is just going to be 2y equals xy plus x. Now notice I've got y's all over the place. How am I going to solve for y? I want to get everything with a y on one side. And, every, and all the rest of the stuff on the other side. So these terms both have y's. I'm going to subtract this from both sides. And I get 2y minus xy equals x. So I've subtracted the xy. Now it is over there. Once I've got everything collected, all of the terms that have got y's with them on one side, I can factor out that y. And then in the final step here, divide both sides by that, and I get y equals x over 2 minus x. And that is my inverse. Don't be afraid to, to slow these videos down, to go back and look over them again. Um, for the homework tonight, uh, I want us to look at... Uh, uh, oh, wait, you know what? Before we actually do the homework, let's do one more type. Let's look at a, a, a graphing one. Um, a little bit weirder, a little bit different here. Um, suppose I give you the following function. And let's say, um, let, let's make this one a, a relatively easy one. There's my f of x. And I want to graph the inverse of f of x. 
So, so here's my function. Looks like some sort of square root function. It definitely passes vertical line test. It's definitely a function. Is it one to one? Does it pass horizontal line test? Yeah, it does. This is one to one function. I want to find the inverse, but I don't have any equations. I don't have any data table. I don't have anything. I don't have any equation where I can switch the x's and y's. I don't have a data table where I can just literally switch the x's and y's. The trick of finding it here is I'm still switching the x's and y's, but how do I do that graphically? I want you to think about the line y equals x. The line y equals x is a line that goes right through my graph right here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip this over my line, y equals x. Notice I've got an x-intercept at negative 1. The coordinates here would be 0, negative 1. Did I say x-intercept? Y-intercept. Y-intercept at 0, negative 1. The coordinates there would be 0, negative 1. If I switch those, that becomes an x-coordinate at negative 1, 0. So literally, I just switched them. I notice that it runs and gets closer and closer to the x-axis. Switch it. It runs and gets closer and closer to the y-axis. There it is. So I'm just flipping it over the line y equals x. Let's take a look at another one. Um, let's do one that looks like this. There's my original function. And I want to find its inverse, find the inverse of this function. Well, again, I have to think about flipping it over the line y equals x. I notice that I've got a y-intercept up here somewhere. So that's going to correspond to a y-intercept maybe up here somewhere. I don't want to put it in the same place. Or, or this y-intercept is going to become an x-intercept. I don't want to put it in the same place as that. I, I, I'll, I'll put it right here. So, so this point corresponds to that point. And then it looks like um, I've got uh, uh, x-intercepts here and here, which might give me this x-intercept might become this x-intercept or y-intercept, this x-intercept might become that y-intercept. So I get something that looks like this and that. Notice that they intersect on the line y equals x. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so that's it for 6.2. So what I'd like you to do now is um, do assignment 6.2, which is starts on page 424. And I want you to do problems 11 through 33, the odd number problems there. And I also want you to do 43 and 49 through 71, the odd number problems there. 11 through 33 odd. Um, start with uh, 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 taking points and flipping them to find the inverses, and then looking at some um, uh, tables and looking at some mappings and finding the inverses, and looking at some graphs and, and graphing the intercepts or graphing the inverses. Um, 43 uh, deals with a, a, a difficult function as an equation, and you have to switch the x's and y's and solve it. Uh, 49 is a graph that you have to do. 49 through 71, you're going to see a whole bunch more equations where you have to switch the x's and y's and solve them. I suspect that if any of these are going to give you a hard time, it's probably going to be some of these ones here, 49 through 71. And if one gives you a hard time, um, uh, uh, shoot me an email about it, and I'll try to respond. If I see a lot of people asking about the same one, I will post a solution um, and uh, in... in on the uh, uh, announcements under this lesson. Um, but go ahead and uh, uh, do this assignment, and then I want you to email me your 6-2 assignment. And you can either send scan and send as a PDF, or take a pic and send it as a JPEG. 
Those are the two easiest file formats for me um, to download and to solve. And you can email them directly to me. You're going to notice that the grade book has changed. The tests have been taken out. And now it's all about these assignments. A big part of your grade is going to be these assignments as you do them and email them to me. And as always, if you've got any questions, shoot me an email with any questions. All right, guys, good luck, and I'll talk to you again soon.